Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 91. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? And this episode, we're going to give you a horrible warning. It's not safe out there. Stay inside. Whatever your first faction is, you picked wrong. It's true, your faction sucks. They're all terrible. We're going to go through and do a quick overview of what a lot of people believe the worst part of collecting their faction is. So without any further ado, let's get into to this sounds good all right before we start i just want to give a big thank you for the reception for horde mode as a format it really means a lot to me yeah it's awesome seeing the amount of enthusiasm and excitement we're recording this like a few days after the episode went live so we're still on the very front end of getting feedback from people but it is absolutely amazing seeing the like glowing positivity surrounding something that took so much work Yeah, just seeing people interested about getting together with some friends or, you know, getting their local game store to try this new thing. It's really awesome. (laughs) And uh, definitely looking forward to continued feedback because, yeah, it seems like a lot of you are interested and that's just awesome. Yeah, and an extra bit of thank you to, again, those of you who decided to help support us on Patreon or by buying from our merch on Orchid 8. All of that has also been a great help. Thank you, guys. If you guys want to join, please feel free. Yeah. Speaking of Orchid 8. I'm really happy we got the Rhinos are free hat in there like last second. I was really hoping Bricky could do it and he did. Yeah, it was unexpected, but a good surprise. But anyway, for the actual announcements part, feedback is already starting to flood the poor hammer email address. That is fine. That is intended. Yes, please continue. <laughs> but for a more permanent solution, I am hoping that next week we'll be announcing an official discord server for the format i have to formalize feedback somehow and that'll be a good way to do it and it gives me a perfect place to do announcements that it's not like random episodes yeah or like having it in our discord and be like you have to pay us money to be able to it's like that no that's not cool (laughs) we're not gw (laughs) we don't make you pay for rules so we'll make you a public discord for announcements for when there's updates to the format or whatever and a place to give feedback for it or ask questions and all that stuff. Yeah, ask questions, find games, whatever. Hopefully that can get set up. I have to find some moderators for it and everything because I do not have the time to be moderating a public Discord anymore. So we're going to find stuff, finalize stuff, and hopefully get that out next week for you all. For now, feedback to our show email. Don't be afraid about flooding it. That is the point. It's all set up to handle it right now. If you can manage to break Gmail, (laughs) then we've done it. (laughs) I will accept it as as a success <laughs> and uh i'm not too worried about it but that'll be a hell of an achievement also we are reading the stuff you guys send in there i know like we're three four days in and we haven't responded 90 percent of what got sent in we're going through trying to take notes of everything people are finding for like we need to clarify some of the rules there's a ton of typos which that's why i wanted the infinite monkeys of the internet to have at it with typewriters to find everything tried to do our best but uh it beats the hundred or so eyes that we had access to before making this public yeah again thank you all next week we'll be announcing some formal discord thing for it so that there's somewhere perfect to put the news and everything all right all that's out of the way let's get into this topic yeah we uh actually posted a completely random no uh funny business post on asking what people thought on problems for their faction and uh it seemed like quite a few people had things to say (laughs) In the last 24 hours, 1,700 of you have replied. I have tried reading them all and have accepted that I read slower than they are coming in. So eventually I might get to it, but uh, thank you. (laughs) I have read at least over 500 of the replies from earlier today. I have not caught up yet, but we managed to get all of the discourse that you guys had added on to what we had already compiled based off our knowledge. And we've got a pretty complete list that we narrowed down to highlights for each army before we jump fully into that we're going to be talking negatively about factions that does not mean that we hate the faction we've got other videos trying to sell you on them kind of thing and what's the fun this is a 
let's have fun talking about the annoying things that we've ran into. Yeah, every faction is a fine first army. Some are less fine, but every faction is a fine first army. Don't worry too much if you're new. These are downsides you should be aware of when you go into your army, though. All right, starting with... Let's do Xenos. Xenos never gets to be first. Yeah, okay. Let's do... uh... A is for Eldar. (laughs) Okay, Eldar. (laughs) A is for Eldar because we spell things awesome. So let's get the uh, clown out of the room. Quins are not really an army. Sorry. Yeah, that's a whole thing. Yeah. If that was your thing that you were getting into, technically it's still possible, but it's on thin ice. And then for Eldar in general, they are very spindly, very light models. They have a bad habit of falling off a table when they get hooked on something because they're all in crazy poses. A lot of people brought up that half the sculpts are old enough to drink and it didn't really get a full range refresh yet. Is hilarious to think about, but actually like surprisingly true. <laughs> Certain parts of the Eldar range are as old as my brother and he ain't young. Yeah, right. <laughs> And flying bases. So this is like all flying bases, but Eldar are like a prime example of flying bases being fucking bullshit. And then a final point that I think is fair, but I kind of am on the other side of it, is Space Marines. Every chapter tends to get their own rules to represent them. They get lore to represent them and all of that. Whereas Eldar, you're lucky if you're remembered. Yeah. And they lump craft worlds that are meant to be entire unique societies and worlds and everything and lump them all together as Eldar when they share very little in common other than actually being the same species. Yeah, and Eldari has, you know, the Yanari, the Harlequins, and the Craftworld. But like, even then, Craftworld has more than just, oh, they're all Craftworlds, right? (laughs) Yeah, so that's a fair point. But on the other side, Brad's like, fuck Space Marines. Space Marines is more of the problem there than Eldar, in my opinion, but that's a whole different fight that I don't want to have today. Yeah. But because Space Marines get that treatment, it feels like Eldari are missing out. True. A lot of Xenos have this problem. And a lot of Xenos, we're going to be bringing up the models problem. And we could probably just generally say, if you're playing Xenos armies, sometimes you're going to go additions without seeing a single new model. Sometimes you're going to be playing 20-year-old models that are fine cast still. And sometimes you're like Votan and you only have half an army. Yeah, so let's drag into Votan now. You have very few data sheets. You have no redundancy in your data sheets. Basically, you've got your one bike, one light transport, one heavy tank, one heavy infantry, one generic infantry, one psyker character, one mech character, one commander character. Army done. It has the pieces that you need, kind of, but uh, not any redundancy, like you said. And I mean, it's very obvious with Votan because like it all came out at once and you're like, well, that's nice, but like finish it kind of thing. So hopefully that happens soon. But I want to bring up a personal one that I am not alone on because I saw this brought up a few times. And thank you, everybody. It was the point I almost deleted. But no, the fucking land fortress is absurdly expensive and it's unreasonable, GW. It is unreasonable that you're charging that much money for the land fortress. It is a very cool model. I agree. Thank you. Very cool. Make it cheaper. (laughs) This is my TED talk on the Land Fortress. Eric wants to steal a Land Fortress so he can turn it into an orc vehicle and he's upset every time he goes to the store and we see the price. And we have a crazy discount. Yeah, I hate it. 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 I will say for a more serious version of that, due to bad rules in 10th, they have lowered the price of Votan units so it's more hoardy than it should be. So you have to spend a lot of money on new kits that are incredibly expensive to play the army, which was not intentional. It's just they had really bad rules and they had to balance around them. Yeah, and uh, that doesn't help when you have so few data sheets. So speaking of horde armies and uh, expensive, let's look at gene stealers. The classic example of, wow, this is way too fucking expensive. So, okay, when I said anything's a fine first army, but some are less fine... This is the one. I think of two specifically. One of them is Tau, the other is Gene Stealers. We'll get to Tau specific. Sure, that's fair, but like Gene Stealers. Gene Stealers is the army that I, when explaining to Christian for the first time which factions you should and should not start as, I said specifically, Gene Stealers is an army where I will advise you should never start with Gene Stealers. The only person who should start their first army as Gene Stealers is the person who heard me say that sentence and said, fuck you 
you can't tell me what to do. I'm going to start as gene stealers. That's the only person. If there's any doubt at all, don't do it. Seriously. And one of those things is right now, gene stealers are strong. Great. That is a pull for some people and that's whatever. Fine. But historically, they've been the hardest to pilot army in the game for their existence while often being a 50% win rate at best. Yeah. And often forgotten about when they're underpowered to the point where they don't get buffs they should have had months ago. Part of it being because the individuals that generally play gene stealers are so much of the fuck you, I'm going to do it anyways, that they've learned to have higher skill and to play it better than most other random players. And so you get this like weird bias of success kind of thing. And uh, that's not great for your first army unless you're one of those people. And while we can argue every army is expensive, Gene Stealers is up there with the very highest of them. It's in like the top six, I think, right now. And there's no expectation of it changing from being one of the most expensive. No. If you are going into Gene Stealers, by as many of the combat patrols as you can argue to yourself you should. Yeah. Because it's the only reason it's a remotely affordable army. Beyond all of that, once you've decided you're going to do it, whether it's your first or not, there's a reason we put it never at gunpoint section in the paint tier list. Yes. It's a downside when we get to chaos. We're going to be repeating one a lot, but it's very true. Gene Sealers is one of the hardest armies to paint to a high standard that you'll actually enjoy. Yeah. But we talked about one, we should do the other. Let's talk about Tau. All right. So speaking of painting, Aaron, <laughs> yeah, as much as uh, painting battle suits is fun, there's a certain repetition that can become boring. And for the love of God, have an airbrush. Don't torture to yourself of trying to paint towel without an airbrush. Get a cheap one. It's fine. It'll do the job. Please, please get an airbrush. <laughs> <laughs> That's general advice. We should have an episode about that everyone should own an airbrush, but specifically for a towel. I'm begging you, do not put yourself through the torture. It's not going to be exciting. It's not going to be fun. For a more serious gameplay oriented angle of why I don't think Tau is a good first army, Tau will not teach you the game of 40k. Tau does not play the entire game. They are a one phase army. They like to stay away and shoot and do nothing else. They have essentially no melee in the entire range. You're you're not going to learn about charging. You're not going to learn about the combat step. All of that will go over your head. You'll start playing a second army and realize that you've been playing like a third of the game. Yes, but I do like to say that there's the caveat of you will be forced to learn how to play positioning effectively because if you don't, the enemy will close ranks on you and force you into fighting and you won't know what to do. Yeah, but you won't learn about things like counter charges and stuff and how to set those up. You would actually be better as a Tau player playing something else first to understand other aspects of the game. It definitely is a shortcoming of Tau. They're the shooting faction. That's what they do. That's basically all they do. And yeah, if it's your first one, it's going to be kind of a different game to learn. But you know what? It's all right. You get to play with big mechs. They're fun, right? On the subject of big mechs, it's been brought up a lot in the uh, post we made from Tau players pointing out, if you don't like one of a couple things and you're like oh wow i love the covenant aspect of tau <laughs> where you've got a bunch of mixed alien races making a coalition together that's not going to be rewarding to you they don't show that off in models they don't really do that they kind of forgot and just went full gundam with it which is fine because gundam is great but like make sure you're in tau for the right reason because if you're not you're not going to enjoy it and you're going to be very mad yeah one of the things with tau because they are generally mechs is some of the legs aren't particularly uh riptide ankles are notorious for exploding <laughs> which is not great when you've spent a good amount of money, time, effort, and then you're like, oops, why wasn't this modeled better? <laughs> and before we finish off, one thing back on the painting is enjoy edge highlighting because there's a bit of that. I don't think edge highlighting is a requirement. There's other ways to do volumetric lighting and stuff. But again, this gets into the whole airbrush discussion. Yeah. All right. What else do we have that's in Xenos? Let's go back to elves. So Drakari has a couple simple ones. They're very collection oriented issues. We brought these up when you were explaining your collection of Drakari. Yes. And in, in the Drakari episode, it's problems you have to know. If you're getting into Drakari, 
you must learn how to kit bash or 3D print or both, preferably. A lot of Drakari is locked in fine cast, ancient, terrible crap. Not even officially sold anymore. And that's the other thing is like, as much as we personally can say fine cast, we don't like it and the old whatever, some people have other thoughts on and opinions on that. No one likes fine cast. It is an undefendable position. But no matter if you're trying to defend it or not, availability is a problem. It just if you can't get the thing, you can't build the thing. <laughs> Yeah, and Drukhari is an extremely neglected range. It is famously neglected. But there are some very cool models, though part of that coolness is because they're fiddly. Yeah, they probably won't get anything other than a token character that they seem to be doing in AOS and now in 40k, where they'll give everyone one character for the edition so you can't complain you got nothing. Haha, -ha, we didn't forget about you, technically. The next time Drakari gets more than that will most likely just be when they're the main bad guy of the edition for the Space Marines to beat up. Which, I mean, looking forward to it because... That'll be fine, but it's just, that's gonna be the next time you see anything. And that is another one of those downsides of like don't expect new refresh range type thing like you have to kind of be ready to do kit bashing and 3d printing and that kind of stuff because like it's just part of what you need to do for drukari the other thing to be very aware of is outside of chaos drukari is the prime example of fiddly bits or dangly things or stabby pokers <laughs> stabby pokers it is the worst you will actually cut yourself on some of this crap they go to such fine points which is hilarious and like so lore accurate, but also fuck that. <laughs> It's really unfun when a dagger goes under your fingernail. Yeah. And I mean, it also makes it more difficult for transporting without breaking things. Yeah, it's elves to the extreme. Like, Harlequins have worse posing to try to not screw up, but like, Drukhari have all the spiky bits on top of being those tiny gangly elves at every angle. Yeah, definitely a problem. Well, we did one of mine. Let's do one of yours. Orcs. Yeah, so I mean, we talked about doing kit bashing and stuff, and Orcs love kit bashing. It's one of the greatest things, partially because a lot of the old kits are really old. <laughs> really old. It's a split between stuff from like a couple years ago and stuff from like 20 years ago. Yeah, which, you know, it's great because a lot of those had a bunch of options and it made orcs kit bashable. It made it do that whole thing, but it kind of forced them to do it at the same time. A lot of the newer models are still cool, but a decent number of them have lost some of that kit bash opportunity. Yes, it's the downside to monopose sprues where there aren't as many spare bits. Yeah. Specifically, orcs have the worst monopose things of the new orc boys. Why did they do that? And you need so many of them. You have four gun boys six melee boys and there's no extra arms to just make it a 10 man either way no and there are ways to still kit bash it like there's enough options that you can do but it's disappointing in comparison monopose models are great they allow for far better sculpting and stuff like that the problem is if you were to point to a problem with monopose every single one of them is on some of the new orc models i don't like that the proof is there that like you can do it this badly yeah it's very much a what's wrong with monopose hey look the orc monopose boys that don't do any of that <laughs> yeah it's very unfortunate. And especially with the boys, orcs are a fairly horde style army. You're going to need a bunch of them. That's just accept it. One thing that I've had troubles with, and it's partially because of the need to kit bash to get the full feeling of orcs. And that's kind of a decision paralysis on the customization where you're just like, what do I do? I want to do so much stuff. I want to do so much cool things, but how and where do I start kind of thing? Yeah, it's fair. If you want to have like the your dudes, yeah. boys involve so much actual money modeling aspect and it's the first step of the process. It is the actual first step, which means that you don't build the momentum. It's a great feature of the army, but it is something to warn about because like it is a downside at the same time. Yeah, which is why I've been playing more of the beast and squig stuff because I don't care as much about making a mine and customizing them. So I'm just like, okay, build it. Job done. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a personal one that I wanted to add to the orcs. I think we can move into another 
horde army. So let's do Tyranids. Prime example. Number one example of no lore. Yeah. Tyranids have essentially zero lore. And a lot of Xenos have this in varying shades. Eldar can't have good lore. Tau's author famously hates Tau. But Tyranids is the prime example of they don't have any lore. You've brought it up before. Like, it's difficult. How do you write fiction from a all-knowing style hive mind? That point of view is so tough, but it's been done in the past from other things. There's ways to do it, and the fact that they haven't really even attempted it is disappointing, especially given 10th is Tyranids are here, so where's the fucking lore? Yeah, and then another main problem is if you like the Horde aspect, you need a lot of real estate for it, a lot of painting the exact same simple model over and over and over. It is a problem because with Tyranids, there is essentially no variance to the Horde portion when it comes to Hormagons and Termagants. As much as I do like... A carpet of them looks great, but you're making that carpet of them. And while you're doing each individual one, you're like focused on it. So that means that you're like paying more attention to each one and like putting more effort than like, oh, just make a carpet of it. Call it good kind of thing. It's a serious downside with Tyranids. Yeah. And I mean, that does go into the whole storage and transport. If you have a horde army, that's going to be a problem, especially when other parts of the army are so massive. Yes. <laughs> especially in comparison to the base size. Yeah, that's a huge problem with a lot of Tyranids of old base sizes that they hang off of on every angle. Wings? They look cool as shit. Fuck that. <laughs> like, find a specific box for your winged hive tyrant, because it's not going with anything else. Alright, so there's one Xenos left, so let's just hit it. Necrons. This is the one I started the post with. My go-to complaint for my Necrons. No one warned me that the arms just fall off. <laughs> You got these spindly little one micron thick pieces of plastic and at the end is a giant hunking gun that weighs like half a pound and the thing just snaps off if you touch that Necron. It seemed like a fair amount of people agreed with you and were also irritated with during the build process. Oh, the new flayed one kit? I saw the comment. The new flayed one kit is horrendous. That's why mine are all kit bashes of like old junk I got off eBay and I 3D printed some hands for because I had heard infinite horror stories from people who bought that kit that is an insane price for insanely low points. It's one of the worst value kits on the planet. And then it's the worst kit to put together. And if you get to like Saris, he is the actual worst experience I've ever had assembling a kit. I needed my wife's help. Really? Was it just your gorilla hands getting in the way? I, my hands are too large to actually build the kit. It's a common story from what I've heard of like, you need extra hands and tweezers and properly aiming the glue. He is held together horrendously under the hood. Yeah. He's really fun to paint though. It's just when you assemble him, he's the worst. There's one thing that uh, has always disappointed me and that's the Catan, partially because we have one that shows off how fucking awesome they can be. Yeah, Void Dragon's amazing and the other two are fine cast. They're awful. They're so bad. Like even ignoring fine cast for its problems, it looks so bad. And then we get into the problem of a transcendent Catan, which is hilarious to think about because I got the one off eBay that was oh no that wasn't even eBay that was mini swap that was the guy I went and met in Flint <laughs> oh that was the sketchiest fuck <laughs> that was the one where I was the sketchy guy this guy brings his son to meet a guy in a parking lot in Flint <laughs> but anyway yeah so I've got one from that and I forgot when you buy one you build a obelisk the meme the worst data sheet in 40k for like four straight editions anytime you build a transcendent katana on, you're paying like a hundred and something dollars to build an obelisk too. <laughs> <laughs> or 3D printing one, please 3D print your transcendent katans. Yeah, and it'd be one thing if like we didn't have the obvious, like, look at how fucking cool, look at how sweet and awesome they can be. What the hell happened? <laughs> yeah, Necrons doesn't have too many major problems, but those are the things that stand out to me. Oh, and get rid of the last of the green rods on the Locust Destroyers. Just update them to be like all the other new ones. Green rods are cringe. Wow. 
Wow. I think that ends our uh, Xenos section. Do we want to move into Chaos? No, let's hit the Imperium. Lame. But okay. It's too predictable to just be going backwards from usual. It's true. Gotta really spice things up. So let's start with one of the spiciest Custodes. Custodes is a single point, but it's an important one. The word Forge World. It is the downside of Custodes. Every downside someone mentions, apart from like some nitpicking about building them and their jewels, I, I know there's little minor things my brother always complained about. And then there's like, oh, there's like only so many of them kind of thing. But, but the real downside is the word Forge World. In general, Forge World and Custodes. Without Forge World, you have half an army. Yep. Forge World is crazy overpriced for shit quality. It has a questionable future existence because they just told everybody to buy a bunch of Horus Heresy stuff and then removed it all from the games and said, don't worry, Custodes, you keep buying it. We would never do this to you. Yeah, you're special. We definitely didn't just stab everybody else in the back. Get back to buying it. Yeah. And then there's the problem of balance with like 9th edition when they just made all of the Forge World stuff awful when the codex dropped because it didn't have the keywords that made the rest of the book function. There's a lot of problems with Forge World, and part of it is also like Custodes without it is actually missing quite a bit. It needs to exist for Custodes to feel full, but holy shit is it bad. It's a rough spot, but Custodes generally, that's the rough spot for them. The rest is fine. Yeah. Well, should we work our way down the echelons and go to Grey Knights next, Eric? Uh, sure. I don't really want to talk about Grey Knights. How are your hammers and your psychic powers going? Uh, they're gone. My wizards are no longer paladins. We're casting gun everywhere. We don't have hammers anymore. I mean, we still teleport. That's cool. Shout out to the one poor commenter who said this podcast made me want to join Grey Knights for all the reasons that got taken away in 10th edition. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I really am. I hyped up Grey Knights because I, I mean, I had a lot of fun with Grey Knights. It was great. We were slinging spells, hitting people with hammers. It was just good fun. Uh, it's all gone, though. <laughs> So ignoring current issues, what are actual problems with Grey Knights? So can I bring up Keldor Drago? Oh, yeah. He's awful. He doesn't actually have a sword as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Yours literally doesn't. Yeah, it's broken like a few dozen times and now it's just gone. I swear a dog ate it or something. It's back in the warp. Yeah, hopefully that can actually be fixed with a new model at some point. But uh, honestly, some of the models are just kind of small. Yeah, comparing yourself to like the new Space Marine updates. Now you have like the, okay, where's mine? Yeah, especially because you're like, here's your paladin that's like super elite badass. And he looks like he's 5'11". Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like the models still are pretty solid it's just in comparison <laughs> the worst part is you know what's going to happen is you're going to trade your downside from we're so cheap but our models are kind of ugly right now to they refreshed our range and now we're unaffordable yeah it absolutely is going to be that and you're going to be like i'm going to buy each individual terminator by itself <laughs> You can buy a box of three for $65. What a deal. It doesn't come with any of the extra stuff, though. And, I mean, I guess there is kind of just like, Grey Knights is a full range, but barely. I accept that it has technically enough, but it's only a bit better than something like Votan in certain parts where you're like, man, I wish uh, wish I had some like anti-tank gun or something like that, even if it wasn't particularly great, but... Uh, You'd settle for a hammer again. I'd settle for a hammer again, or just psychic. That'd be cool too. All right, let's go down another echelon of power armor to Space Marines. Yeah. Space Marines has one famous downside. I've mentioned it multiple times. You are the subscription service. You will be buying new models for the rest of existence every few months to keep this game profitable. Which some people enjoy, but... You get more attention than everybody else in exchange for it, but you better open that wallet. And because of that, you have a huge bloated range. Which sounds weird to say it's a downside. You know, like, wow, you have so many options. And it's like complaining. But you have so many options of man in suit of armor with gun. Yeah. This gun has slightly different bits 
it than other gun. This is a new unit. You must now show the difference between these units. There is a lot of overlap and kind of calling back to the Eldari of craft worlds are all treated the same. Space Marines have their different sub factions and stuff like that. Their chapters are unique. They have story. Not all of them are treated equally. Some of them are treated like a Xenos faction. Other ones are treated like they need to have a new book every three months or they'll die. Even the ones that are treated more like Xenos still get as much as Xenos. So like, it's not like they're not getting anything, but it definitely feels bad in comparison to the other ones that have infinite subscription new updates. You can end up with fracturing within a single faction. Yeah. Which is its own downside that is entirely unique from the one that Eldar players complain about with theirs. And they're both fair viewpoints. All right. What's further down than that? Sisters would be the lowest power armor. Okay. So Sisters is interesting because we didn't really know. But after running it by our Sisters player, the stuff you guys were saying in the comments was apparently very true. I guess Sisters is famous within its own community of having monopose models that should mean they're really well put together and really nice, interesting looks. But somehow they screwed them up so that they still have massive amounts of mold lines and there's gaps all over the place and there's awful issues with overlapping bits on the models that make it really difficult to paint things that are visible. Yeah, which is not something that, like, because neither of us play Sisters. We didn't build them. We didn't paint them. So once it's all done, you don't really notice it. But yeah, that's super disappointing because like one of the nice things about Monopose is like you're supposed to be able to get a sleek, well-designed model and then you end up with mold lines all over the place and gaps and like the actual poses aren't in a way that makes it, it doesn't have to be easy, but making it needlessly complicated to paint, it's never great. Beyond that, I don't think there was too much. No, I think we can go down to a uh... Uh, under power armor to just augmented and do admech. Do you want to get the uh, obvious one? Sure. Admech is stupid expensive. The kits are all so expensive compared to everything else. There isn't a good value box for admech that makes it cheaper to buy. It's real rough all around. If you want to collect admech, you better be rich. Part of that is because of Skatari. And shockingly, Skatari are very complex models. They're like 11 unique pieces for a seven point model. Yeah, they look pretty cool once they're done. But, but given the fact that they're more of like a horde unit, they don't need that. That's unnecessary. Yeah, and then there's the obvious other one of if you like the wrong part of the army, you'll live in constant disappointment like Tau players. Cult Mechanicus is unfortunately very, very neglected compared to the Skatari half. I mean, it basically doesn't exist. It's essentially just a couple characters and yeah. one half-naked squad. <laughs> and it's disappointing because there is massive potential and if you didn't know that it wasn't you could be in for trouble. Yeah, uh, I guess we can go down to the lowest of the low. The Honorable Imperial Guard, or Astra Militarum. This is another pricing issue for the uh, troop, because... Uh, You're a horde. <laughs> very much so. Yeah, and it has the problem of you'll have a lot of variety in what type of guard people like, and if you don't like Cadian's tough shit... It's very true. GW really wants it to only be Cadian's. It feels like the Space Marine chapters that have like all of the focus is the Cadian part of Guard, whereas like the rest, Krieg. Yeah, but the difference is it's not a coat of paint. It's entirely unique models. Absolutely. And yeah, it's awkward that Krieg is just straight up more expensive to collect before we even get into like value boxes. Yeah. And then the Horde aspect goes past the infantry portion into vehicles. Like you have cheap infantry. You also have the cheap vehicles compared to everybody else. So you're a Horde all the way through. You need to spend a fortune and have an entire spare wall to store your stuff. That is very true. And transporting them is like... Don't even think about it. You need a big trunk on your vehicle because uh, you got a lot of shit. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's very cool and all, but, like, it's shocking how many vehicles you can put in a list. All right, well, speaking of vehicles, let's move into our final faction here for the Imperium with Knights, which will pivot us into chaos. All right, for Imperial Knights. The first one is the key one. You feel like you're playing an asymmetrical game. It can be very awkward and unfun for both you and your opponent. You don't get smaller than a tank on legs. Which, it can be awesome. You can absolutely have fun being the oppressive enemy kind of thing and you don't have to take it to a point that's like annoying your opponent can have fun trying to kill the thing but that doesn't always happen sometimes it's very unfun <laughs> 
<laughs> sometimes you feel like you're just a DPS check. Yeah. Like, a, did you bring your anti-tank? No? Well, this is gonna suck. Yeah. Did you bring your anti-tank? Oh, yes? Uh-oh. It's a very skew list, and it has to be, just because that's knights. And then, currently, there's some awkward stuff if they took away bondsmen and stuff, but that's too specific to right now. It's not really a major... It's a pretty fucking major thing. Hopefully it gets fixed soon, but, like, I don't know when the Knights Codex is coming out, so... Unique rant. Not for this. But let's move into Chaos Knights, which has a slight difference on the anger here. Yeah. Chaos Knights is an extremely one-note army. There is almost no incentive, nor has there been for years, to own a well-rounded Chaos Knight collection. Before the new War Dog models existed, it was still spam War Dogs, and then it just got worse. That's true. I mean, they do have some cool models, but... But it doesn't matter if you care about playing the game. Yeah, I was like, they're showpieces, and that's fine, but if you want to play, it's always War Dogs. Until they have rules that make Make you want to bring a balanced list. Speaking of war dogs, point number two. Since the new kit has come out, fuck you, America. You're not allowed to have war dogs. It's been literal years and we can't keep them in stock for longer than 10 minutes. Yeah, availability is always an issue that no matter what is a problem. And that's whether it's an old kit that's been out of print kind of thing and you just can't get it, or apparently they've all sunk to the bottom of the sea because of logistical issues or something. They let the British drive the wrong direction and they took the ship and turned it into a submarine. Ah, maybe that's what happened. But yeah, not being able to get war dogs sucks. All right, moving on. Let's hit chaos real quick here. From here on out, everyone in power armor has a single thing that was mentioned probably in no less than 100 comments. At least. It was more than that. Basically, every single one talked about it, and there was a decent amount of chaos talking about it, so... Trim. Painting trim is the most awful, boring, horrendous task. There's tiers of it. For the next four factions that we mention, all of them deal with chaos trim. Thousand Suns has it worst. We'll get to that again. But assume they all have this terrible thing. Very much. So, where do we start? And let's go generic CSM. All right. One of the best arguments about CSM that I saw was the person who said, because of how CSM SM models are made, no matter how you play them and what version of Chaos Space Marines you want to play, you're stuck looking like Black Legion painted differently. Yeah. Because you will always be Chaos Corrupted. They decided that you were playing Chaos Space Marines. You are not playing Renegades. You are not playing Traitors. You are playing Corrupted. Even though lore-wise, that is not how they work. It is very annoying because there's potential that's just missed out, like Iron Warriors and Night lords that a lot of people want and following something that we'll get kind of into with demons but emperor's children noise marines please <laughs> Yeah, that gets into like the non-existent one. Another point though, while we're on the missing model aspect is everyone got hit with the loss of Forge World units. Not everyone got hit to the same amount. Yeah. Space Marines barely noticed it because they have Redemptor Dread, Brutalis Dread, and now Ballistis Dread. So who needs a Leviathan Dread or a Dorito or a Contemptor? Whereas on the Chaos side of things, that was your Dreads. You just lost Dreadnoughts at as an option. You can have the Hellbrute. Get fucked. Custodies got away with their own, like, you are special. CSM did not. You just don't get Dreadnoughts anymore. Yeah, it's real awkward. Like, as much as I'm a proponent of, let's get rid of that garbage, don't do it when there's no other option. Like, you jumped out of the plane without your parachute. Yeah, for a core model to CSM, like, what the hell happened? That's not okay. <laughs> All right, let's start talking about the special flavors. So, Death Guard. All right, they don't have DR. That's not a problem with them versus the rest of the game. What? Come on. They're supposed to be super resilient. That's really complicated. I don't like this point. All right. Other than in Lords of Silence, where it gets made as a point, it's not really been a thing. Really? Death Guard's thing is stinky poo-poo. That's all they've got. 
Oh, I just assumed that they also had the, like, unkillable... Well, that's because they have poxwalkers who are literal zombies. Yeah, I thought that was, like, a Death Guard thing. No, Death Guard... When 8th edition launched, they made that the identity, is that they're the super resilient chaos army. And then they decided that is not a thing anymore. And they're like, we'll go in a different direction. No direction. Yeah, I, I don't understand that at all. We could argue the issue is they essentially have no rules currently and they're in an identity crisis. That's a real point. We need to see a Death Guard codex actually fulfill a new identity for Death Guard since they took away the resilient angle and they didn't give them the angle we thought they were moving towards until a random FAQ emergency patch to make them very enfeebling. Yeah, which was an awesome direction. It was like not really what I had anticipated because I, you know, I'm fairly new. We started ninth, so I don't have the full lore history kind of thing, but it was cool. I liked the idea of, okay, maybe Make everybody else worse, enfeeble them, and that's how you get, you know, to be better. But we have to see them actually do something. And then there's the collection angle. They've got a terrible combat patrol, which means it's really hard to get into them compared to other factions. Plague Marines are just a nightmare with how you buy them versus any other basic unit. The buying in sevens meme... <laughs> and the three characters, each of which are like 15 plus dollars that are actually just playing Marines to get up to a 10 man squad. The fact that your sergeant is a separate kit that you buy, it's so awful. It reeks of that like first Primaris launch disaster that it got paired with. Yeah. There's ways within Death Guard communities to smooth over these issues, but they existed and they may exist again if we go back to your sergeant mattering in a squad which currently it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I was going to say like 10th edition, we kind of hid the problem. Hid the problem. That's a good way of saying it. It doesn't mean the problem's gone. <laughs> it could be back. But you're also just the slowest army. So, so slow. Now that you're not resilient, it feels awful. Let's move on though to, uh, I guess you want to hit Thousand Suns, the uh, worst of the trim. Sure. It, Thousand Suns gets a special mention above all the other factions for Chaos Trim. We we have it the worst. It's awful. It is probably the single identifying problem that people point to 4,000 suns. 90% of the model is trim or keeping your trim from bleeding onto sections it shouldn't be. Yeah. And it's a clean look typically, which means it's very important you do it right. You can't use the Death Guard stinky poo poo argument for why your models don't look well painted. Yeah. You can't just be like, well, it's chaos. It's messy. It, no, 1,000 suns are like, yeah, they're supposed to be rigid and that's the trim kind of thing. Yeah, they are soulless mechanical suits for the most part. Like, they should be well maintained looking. Yeah. They are mostly just magic holding together stuff. <laughs> It also shares Death Guard's problem of it's got possibly the least favorite combat patrol of the bunch for a lot of people. It makes it awkward to get into the faction for sure. And I know that you've had complaints with 10th edition Hero Hammer and stuff like that. You have a lot of characters. There's the secondary problem. Thousand Suns technically were a full army, but when you remove all the data sheets that either don't work well with our army rule or aren't duplicates just to pump up numbers, we've got essentially five data sheets that are of any use. Yeah. And then you've got named characters or variant characters or stuff that just doesn't work at all with how the army is supposed to function. Having so few data sheets essentially is a problem. And previously you got around it because you could customize your hero unit type things and it was like oh you get to have fun but like that's not part of 10 so it's very obvious all right let's move on to the last of the suits world leaders right the last of the four yes this third the last of the four <laughs> The world leaders, what the actual fuck happened to you? You had like a lot of options and then they took them away. You turned into an army that was half the size of what you were before you were an army. I don't get it. You have less units than you had before you existed. Think about that. You're missing key units. It's not just like, oh, they removed some redundancies. And the units they kept were the redundancies. <laughs> You are less than half an army. You are a basic troop, an elite troop, and a named character, and a generic character. Yeah, that's about right. Oh, and I guess you have your cultist equivalent. And as much as, like, world leaders is unga bunga go up the board, like... You'd like a little more variety. Especially when you took it away. It used to be there. <laughs> 
things that they have in the lore are missing and could have just been copy pasted from CSM without issue. Yeah. And are already painted that way in several people's collections who played before last edition split them out of the book. Yeah, that's true. And a few people, actually more than a few people, made a specific call out about Jackals being a pain in the ass to transport. Which is interesting. I haven't seen it yet, so I'll believe it. I believe it, but... Uh, kind of weird. I want to know why more. Yeah, I don't know if it was because they break or if it's just like they all get... Are they too big for their bases because they're like Giga Chad? I think so. They're overhanging and like, yeah. I could see that being a problem, but quite a few people brought it as a specific call out. All right, let's talk about the final faction, Chaos Demons. Yeah? There's a single large point that I've said a hundred million times. You are four factions. Sort of five when you get into Bellacore, but you are four factions. You're four distinct factions that have distinct looks, lore, and... Fan bases. Yeah, fan bases. Like, the expectation of the models in play are also different. It's not just, oh, they're slightly different, but there's a enough overlap. No, they're like actually really four different things. Stop it. It is highly unlikely you will like the full Chaos Demon army. If you don't like a section of the army or God forbid two, you do not have enough variety to make an army. You can be okay with three. Like, sure. But like we're getting to you are half an army, you are Votan. Yeah, you're gonna have some troubles and you'll feel it. It'll be noticeable, but you can still get away with it. If you don't like half of them, good luck. Yeah, if you're trying to make a mono god list, it is hard to make more than, you know, 2.5k of unique units that you don't have just the maximum legal quantity of. When you get past that point, you're just trying to fill out those four units that exist within that mono god. Which is super disappointing because there's a lot of potential and there's very distinct, interesting things for each part, even ignoring the whole Slanesh problem. <sighs> What is the Slanesh problem, Eric? Well, they uh, always get things last. You're just salty because you want to play Emperor's Children now. I am. I am very salty about that. Thank you. I will say, someone pointed it out, people forget that Slanesh is excess, and they just go, lol, sex god. Yeah. And that's true, because Slanesh is not just sex, it is also drugs and rock and roll. It's the excess party kind of thing. The seeking of going beyond where you should be, whether it be in perfection, if you're looking at Emperor's Children and falling into all of that, or enjoyment, looking at what happened to all of the Eldar. <laughs> <laughs> Rip bozos. So, like, there is more to Slanesh. Yeah, but it does. You get flanderized when you get to demons and chaos in general, but more so with demons specifically. Then we can go into the problems with the others. Zinch, you're the shooting army in a melee army, which is awkward rule wise. You're the spellcaster army, and you didn't even have spellcasting before they took it away from the game with your whopping one third of the options of Thousand Sons. Now you've got nothing. No, now you're with Grey Knights. And then Corn is the most one note thing imaginable. And for the buff everybody based around melee combat, you are shockingly non-resilient and beat sticky. You feel more finessey and more slaneshy than you should, but that's partly a problem with blood letters and being for some reason still counting as like a horde when you should definitely be like the most elite. Like the entire point is being the demon shards of the god of fighting everyone should be an uber chad that's very true it should be but it's not and because of how play works you have to be finesse oriented to hit the objectives and that kind of stuff which doesn't really feel right but i mean they got it reasonably close because like you're still melee fighting and demons is melee like. and as with the mortal followers nurgle parodies them perfectly with demons on having zero flavor what are you doing it's clearly obvious you're not doing anything but <laughs> it's more annoying with Nurgle demons because they're zombies. Yeah. They clearly should do something that they do not. There is infinite lore outside of 40k to pull ideas from. Pick one. Have you seen The Walking Dead? Have you turned on AMC from 10 years ago? Is it still on? There is examples on your television right now 
Actually, Walking Dead might be dead because magic finally did him eventually, so I would assume that it's over. <laughs> True. We only do has-been stuff, like 40k. Wait. <laughs> Got him. But it's just ridiculous that Nurgle doesn't get anything. Like, I guess it's one thing to have Death Guard not fully understanding until the Codex, but Nurgle Demons is like, you're a zombie. Be a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that wraps up all of the factions. You now know what to look out for in whatever you are getting into. And you now know why your faction sucks. True, but again, with all of the silliness aside, from a serious standpoint, these are downsides to be aware of. Don't let them eat away at you. It's just a fact of every army's got downsides. Yeah, and they also have upsides that are very fun and interesting and all of that stuff. So enjoy what you have. It's also fun to bitch about things that are annoying. Now we have to go read a lot of patron names. Are you ready for it? No, but I'm obligated to, so... Let's start with 99 Nines. Adrian Frank. Alex Fuja. All Nighter. Andreas. Cameron R. Craig Judge. Daniel Friche. Danik Toman. Edward Lawrence. Ethan Gerard. Finn Smiley's. I swear we do the Smiley's different every time. I think so too. Gage Parrot. George McClung. VMD. Grundle Bundle. Gun Game 4453. Gyarados. Hyperion TV. Eian. Iron Father. Jacob Gibson. Jake Vacaneo. Jarrett DiPerna. Jaden. Jeff Stompo. Joel. Kiwi Fruit Bird. Love K. Michael Melcher. Morpheal 55. Mr. Game. Nikki. Owl Bee Bark. Fizzled. Proteus 7331. Rock. Rookie XP. Samuel Summerfield. Severed Sage. Squareson. Timothy Cody. Trine. Warlock JPG. Andy. <laughs> this is breaking me. Wait, this will help. <laughs> You gonna do it or not? I yeah. Yasser Zazo. Yas sir Zazo. Yas sir Zazo. Yes sir Zazo. Yasser Zazo. And Yasser Zazo. Thank you all so much. And thank you as always to our producers, Brandon Janky, Demolition Man, Dr. Lace, Jeffrey Bowser, Yon Guy C. Michael Sullivan, Nick DeFeo, and Robert Tueno. Thank you so much for supporting the show. All right, we're out of here then. Sounds good. Sounds good.